An overdose of oxygen is the reason why I became blind a few months after birth. And that's also the reason why I stand here today. Because had I not been blind, I would not be spreading the message of inclusion and accessibility. I would not be here. My life would not have taken this course that it's taken now. Because I would have been living a totally different life. Unless you're a part of your target group, you don't know what problems are taking place out there. Everyone tells me, Oh, you should go to a church, you should go to a temple, you should go here, you should go there, you should pray that God gives you back your eyesight. Don't you want to see the world? Don't you want to see people? I'm like, I think you're the one who's blind. Because I can see people. I can see nature. I can see everyone. I have a picture in my mind about what my friend looks like, about what nature is. For example, this beautiful desert of Rajasthan. I can imagine it and picture it in my mind. The air speaks to me, the flowers speak to me, the sand dunes speak to me. I don't need to see, I can see everything through my inner eyes. But life is not a bed of roses for anyone, especially for a girl with a disability. You always face discrimination somewhere. The first instance I recall was when I was thrown out of my class at the age of six. Can you believe that? We were asked a question, the whole class, and I gave the right answer while my classmate gave the wrong answer. I was thrown out of the class and she was thumped on the back. Why was I thrown out of the class? Because I was blind. I was not supposed to know that answer. How could I? The next discrimination was in the playground. My classmates would be running and jumping and bowling and batting and I would be left in a corner because I couldn't play. I couldn't enjoy. So many discriminations, even with regards to movies. I mean, they were like, how can you watch a movie? But I can, I can hear the dialogue, I can. but no one understood me. At the age of 12, I lost my mother. And that was a big setback in my life because I was like left alone. My father, of course, was in the army and I lost my mother. So that was, but a small voice inside me said, don't give up, don't give up. It's not the end of the world. And I, then at the age of 18, I got a job. And I took this white cane of mine and I started traveling in public transport. I had to catch two buses. And my father said, this is not gonna work. You're a girl, you're blind, someone may, kidnap you, someone may do this to you, someone may do that to you. Have you heard of this case and that case and that incident and this incident? I said, I don't care. I'm going to go. Whatever happens, let it happen. I'm not going to be scared because I'm a girl and I'm blind. So I said, okay, and I started traveling by public transport. Of course, I did encounter challenges and difficulties and Eve teasing and people making fun of me. Even my own gender elder women did not stand by me. They were like, why are you roaming around in the night? Who do you think you are? I was like, okay, I, I'm working. And I asked them this question. I said, you, if your daughter is blind, you may go with her today. You may go with her tomorrow, but the day after tomorrow, you're not gonna go with her. You're gonna tell her, sit at home, you're blind. So I don't wanna sit at home. I wanna go and do things and rock that boat. So. I then realized that I'm rocking, but there are many blind people, as India is the home to 15 million blind people. The world's largest blind people are in India. And where are they? They are tucked away. They are out, they are not there, especially girls. So I started a mobile blind school where I traveled to the houses of blind people with my white cane in public transport with braille machines and laptops. And I showed those parents that if I can, your child can. And 28 year old Vinod, who was uneducated, heard my program on the radio and he asked me, ma'am, how can you do this? Is this possible? Can I go to school? I said, you may not be able to go to school, but you can write your exams and correspondence and you can use technology. I went to his house, I brought him out. He attended a camp of mine where he learned how to use this white cane and where he learned how to use a smartphone with talk back, where he learned how to use a computer with a screen reader. He sent emails, he was saving documents in Microsoft Word. He 
became a computer trainer for many others, and he turned from a liability to an asset. Another uneducated boy, age 24, from a village, a very rural village, whose mother was a vegetable seller. He too came out of the shackles. He had never been to school, but he now speaks reasonable English. He uses a computer, and he works in an air-conditioned office in a call center now. He doesn't need to go to school, but he can support his mom and himself with a decent salary. That is social transformation. I then registered my trust, Jodhir Gamea Foundation, and we started with two students. Now we have 10. We started in a very small building. Now we have a slightly better building where we can accommodate 10 students. We provide residential training to these students in interpersonal skills, in mobility, in communication, in how to travel by themselves, how to take life into their own hands, technology, and we try to place them in jobs, send them for higher studies, and enable them to go towards their passion. One of our blind students has even acted in a Malayalam movie. <laughs> Pray them too. So there is no barriers for a blind person. Just if you have a passion, we have a passion too, and we can enjoy that passion. We also sensitize the community because the community has to be aware of us. We take our students to malls, to shopping centers, to government offices. The first time we took our students to Pothis and Big Bazaar and all these departmental stores, people started staring at us if we aliens, just as though we were aliens. And but this went on two times, three times. The fourth time, people started taking notice of us. They started helping us. They said, OK, can we help you? The fifth time, I got a call from Big Bazaar saying that, oh, you know, it's our sailing day. It's our discount day. Can your visually impaired people, if they want to shop, we welcome them. We provide assistance. You can book online, da 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 I said, where was this when I came for the first time? But now it happens because visually impaired people are coming out, they are visible, they are seen. So the government takes notice of them. As a social activist, I work with the government to try and change the policies, to make the world accessible, to make roads and footpaths accessible. Earlier, the currency notes were completely accessible. They were of different sizes, so we could distinguish the notes, like 5, 10, 50, 100, 500,000, etc. After 2016, of course, the sizes became very similar. 50 and 200 are of the same size. So what can be done? We lose our money. So we want the currency notes to be of different sizes so that we can identify them. That's what we want. We want to create an accessible India where the Rights of Persons with Disability Act, the United Nations Convention for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities that India has ratified in 2006 should be implemented on ground reality and not remain a theory. We work towards this. And my ultimate dream in my life is to have a campus of my own. We now operate from a rented building. It's very hard to pay rent. It's very hard to meet our needs. But we want a proper campus, a new world for blind people where they can be rehabilitated, they can walk, they can do mobility, they can do sports, they can do all kinds of things, they can cultivate vegetables, do farming, be with nature, learn technology, do whatever they want, adapted physical education and everything. We take our students everywhere. We want them to experience life to the fullest. But for this, we need our own campus. We cannot pack our bags every three years when someone throws us out. We need permanency in our organization because we do vocational training. We've now started a small kindergarten for blind. We have a computer training center. So we need to keep this all in one place where blind people can have a world of their own. But this we cannot achieve alone. We want you all to join hands with us in whichever way you can. So yeah. And also we can do sports. We can do adventure. There are no barriers for visually impaired people. In fact, people with any kind of disability. We have the right to do anything we want. And I'm going to prove that to you by showing you what I can do and what many blind people can do. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity.